Welcome to my channel, it's Prophetic Series, and this one is Moments That Seers See With Great Ease. There are moments that the prophets that attempt seers because they are able to see things in the spirit with ease and are able to access about all of the message that God passes across to them or conveys to us to them or to his people to them uh, is appreciated via their seeing aid or, or spiritual seeing aid uh, are able to see with ease. So special moment defines or determines whether they will be able to see with great ease or they'll find it difficult to see. In spite of the fact that they are seers, there are certain moments that they see with ease and hence they want to remain in that state. So you may have been called as a prophet or as a seer or you desire to operate as a seer and uh, you don't know that there is a thing like this. I want to guide you so that you will also work hard to uh, float or keep yourself around these moments that uh, serve as leverage for seers to stand upon and be able to see with ease each time they prophesy or want to prophesy. The first is the moment God is speaking. When the seer hears the voice of God, it's easy for the seer to see what God is saying. Let's pick Genesis chapter 22, for instance, from verse 1 until verse 30. When Abraham had bound Isaac to sacrifice him as a burnt offering unto God upon God's instruction, God called out, the Bible said, an angel of the Lord called out unto Abraham. And the moment that happened, the Bible said, when Abraham looked up to see, then he saw, you know, he had the voice, then he looked up to see who was talking to him. Then he saw behind him a ram caught in a ticket in its arms. So when God is speaking, it's easier. It forms an atmosphere that makes it easy for me now to extend from hearing to seeing. Number two is moment of anger. When a prophet or a seer is ang uh, enraged, has been annoyed by somebody, when the anger of a prophet is aroused by somebody, it's easy for that prophet to begin to see at such moment. So you leverage on anger to see. Uh, let's look at Balaam. Balaam was on his way upon invitation by the enemies of the children of Israel when they were returning from uh, Egypt, the land of Egypt. And he was on his way to curse the people of Israel, as it was. Then the donkey saw the angel of the Lord and could not go straight until he it had to uh, crush the foot of Balaam, Balaam across the wall. And Balaam was angry. It was then that Balaam struck the donkey. And then the donkey spoke to Balaam. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw an angel. So that moment, the man, Balaam, was angry. And he was a prophet as of the time before he turned out a soothsayer. So he was able to see moment of anger. Number three, moment in which you're studying the word. When you are reading the Bible as a seer or somebody who is intending to grow in your seeing ability, it's a moment that God can easily point your attention to a particular revelation. And it's going to be easy for him to pass a message, give you a message during such time. So take note of that. Number four is the moment of prayer. The time when you are in a high doubt or a closed area, a place to pray to God by yourself. It's going to be a moment in which God is going to speak with you. Like when we talked about studying the word, you remember that uh, Daniel said that he was studying the book of Jeremiah, then he understood why it was. It was then he caught the revelation about what God said. It was then he caught it. So that was when God spoke to him, and that was when he saw what was supposed to be of the people of Israel by perception in his imagination, uh, inner mind. Talking about prayers, 
you are praying, the Bible said that Jesus prayed. And when he was in agony, he prayed much the more. That's uh, in Getsemane before his arrest. But what happened there? Uh, the angel of the Lord showed up and so that was when he was praying. So there are several occasions in which you pray and then you can see. Okay, the devil came to tempt Jesus on the mountain, transpiration, when he was praying. You see, Zechariah was in the temple doing what? Praying. So the apostles received that cloven tongues of fire and they saw them, the fire on their head, each one of them. During what time? When they were praying. You see, so a lot of seeing happened when you're praying. So you have to have your mind noise calm so that you can be focused enough and then you begin to see things that you were not even expecting to see when you're praying. So that's a secret there. Number five is when you are with a seer, listening to a seer. A seer can be either prophesying or teaching you or narrating a vision he has had. And even if you are not able to see before, in the process, the atmosphere becomes church and brought to that realm where he was or she was and she was able to see in the spirit. And you are now being carried along because your spirit now got connected with your spirit in the course of the conversation. So that's why uh, being emotionally clear to people can be dangerous in a bad way if they are the wrong type or they've got some bad energy. But this one is positive because this person have got some good energy. So in the process, you see that you'll be able to see the same thing that the seer is talking about. So when you are with a mentor who is a seer or anybody who is a seer, and the person is narrating or even casting directly, proclaiming directly what you're seeing in the realm of the spirit, your eyes can be open right there and you begin to see. So you leverage upon it to have that repeated encounter over and over until it becomes your regular kind of life. But this has to do with some other structural exercises that are scripturally based and not to keep you uh, floating at this level. Let's move to point number six on when these people uh, see us, see uh, with ease, moment of the need. There's a time when there's a problem in front of them and they really want to solve it and they are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they are not seeing. But because of the need on ground, you see that the anointing upon them become aroused and then they will begin to see. That steps us up in the eyes open up. This time I prophesy this way uh, in an open approach where you have to generate the cause instantly. Yes. And uh, open-ended approach to prophecy, not like it's a close. So I just generate the chord of the prophecy and I continue to prophesy until I'm done. The moment I start opening my mouth, I keep prophesying until I'm done with the prophecy. It can be when I'm engaging the prophetic code of Splunkner or when I'm engaging any other prophetic code like, uh, let's say, the prophetic code of Shadow or the prophetic code of prophetic questions, uh, which is in a rare occasion anyway. So, and the likes, like prophetic code of the Dremicola, can be used under such condition to be able to see it's a good moment. People have come with a need and there's no solution and they start to emotionally get it. You are aroused and you are able to see with ease. That's the uh, moment in which see is able to see with ease. The seventh way or seventh moment that seers are able to see with ease is uh, a moment of a protracted or a fasted period. Let me use that word, a fasted period. That's to say that they were not particularly fasting to see, but maybe they were not even planning to fast on this occasion, but something happened and they didn't take their meal from morning to let me say 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. of that day. It's electrically charged moment of an atmosphere for CES to be able to see, provided the spirit man is not contaminated. So if a seer, uh, one who desires to be a seer, can practice a fasted kind of life, it will bring them to that place where they can catch 
some visions here and there until eventually over time from information and proper awareness enhancing their ability they are able to be lodged in the body of the so where see and become consistent enough for them number eight moment that CSC would be is, is when they are teaching about the power of God or about seeing. That's to say when I begin to refer to a place where a seer in scripture or seeing or contemporary seer or seeing it now excites my seeing ability. It propels me to see. And this is for somebody who is already seeing but it's a weak for that occasion and cannot break into that brain. So talking along the line, discussing to the line of um, seeing something that has to do with seeing from scripture where a prophet saw or a seer saw or a contemporary seer saw something that was accurate or forensic you now excites you your own ability and it shifts you into that atmosphere or realm and you begin to see with that level of this the eight uh, moment that uh, a seer is able to see with these is upon demand somebody can come to you and ask for a help like Saul came to Samuel and Samuel was called a seer and that's Samuel chapter 9 from verse 5 down and Saul came to Samuel to seek his uh, prophecy now, God did not tell Samuel anything about Saul coming in terms of what Saul was coming to ask for, but God told him about, I'm sending you a king for my people. But the problem that he brought was the donkey that you are missing. And Saul told, Samuel told Saul that they have been seen because he came to demand for these problems. So when somebody is coming to meet you with a need as a seer, it's a time when you can look inward and have an inner vision with this to be able to solve the problem. So it, it opens you up to see what the need uh, on ground is and you are able to even go as far as solving the problem that you have come back with seeing. That's uh, a point or moment that seers are able to see uh, with ease. The next uh, moment is a uh, moment of impartation. That's number nine, moment of impartation. A moment in which you are under a seer, not just listening to them, but a seer lays their hand on you. That very moment can be a moment in which a flash or vision or flash of visions will come. And if you come as a young seer, around such atmosphere over and over, it will come to a point that there will be fairly, uh, will be fairly stabilized, particularly that you are engaging the other parameters. Effectively, it becomes easy for you to do that. And um, lastly for this uh, video, number 10, which one do I pick? Because there are too many of them. Let me just try to uh, conclude with one. The moment in which you are narrating a previous vision. So when you're narrating a previous vision, a vision you've had in the past, it gets the atmosphere charged again, and then you're brought to that same realm where you cut that vision. The realm where you were at, and then you caught that vision. And then you see that you begin to see as if you are in that same realm again, and you begin to see the clarity. So these ones prepare you, that is position you to be able to see, catch some kind of scanty visions here and there or glimpse of visions, but to be able to operate consistently in the prophetic office, there has to be the order of polishing of yourself. The positions you could be able to leverage on either these parameters or even uh, involuntary or voluntary parameters of doing the property scripturally and then you are able to see with consistency. Seers are people who see predominantly everything the prophesied about. So with this, I want to start here. In case you're new, you're subscribed to my channel now. 
like this video, video comment, share it with somebody. Also, you want to take your property book deeper, sign up my course, certificate course in forensic prophecy CFP or the diploma course in forensic prophecy DFP and take your prophecy to another dimension. We have by the grace of God been able to train in the Shiloh School of Sears, prophets from or prophetic people from over 120 nations in the results are outstanding. Your, you are the next person to come back with baffling results, astonishing results from taking our training in the Shiloh School of Sears. God bless you. I pray that the Lord release the CMI to the body of Jesus. Amen.